ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 258. 68? What are, what are we? I'll look it up again. Don't give me that look if you don't know, all right? It's unacceptable for everyone here to know I'm wrong, but not know what the right answer is. 266. Close, all right? Welcome to episode 266 of the Spearhead Sunday's podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and thank you to everyone who came out to the Melbourne International Comedy Festival shows. Really appreciate it. Six shows in a beautiful old theatre, the Lithuanian Club. Uh, is that a real place? It sounds like a fucking invented European nation that, that's like in Marvel Comics. You know when they create fake Middle Eastern nations to seem less racist? Oh, they're, they're from uh, D- D- Sandistan. Look out, and then they can just, like, turn that whole country to glass in the film and it doesn't seem racist because it's not a real place. That's what Lithuania sounds like, but it is a real place. Someone graffitied fuck Russia on the outside. Did you see that? Someone wrote a huge fuck Russia on the outside of Lithuania, the Lithuanian club, and they're not Russian. They're, they're actually right next to Ukraine. So so once Ukraine is Russia, they'll be the, the next Ukraine, you know? And, and they'll be that because some Russian would have read that, taken a photo of it and sent it to Putin. And he go, you know what? Fuck these Lithuanians in Melbourne. I'm going to invade the real country. And then the Lithuanian club will turn into some kind of embassy. Didn't Lithuania used to be part of the USSR? So maybe yes. it is actually a pretty fair thing to say. Fuck Russia. Oh, really? So so here we go. Pro, Pro-Putin pro Kielin here. No. Well-known communist. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. Ukraine also used to be part of the USSR. Yeah, but like yeah. isn't so Russia... fuck Ukraine, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, I mean, hey man, fuck the USSR. <laughs> but also... I think we did, and that's why they're not around anymore. Facts. But it, that's what they're saying, right? No, I think they I think they, they are assuming that, that Lithuania is like a city in Russia or a state in Russia. I feel like it's a pretty weird, like, that's like, you know what that's like? That's like going to the Holocaust Museum and spray painting fuck Nazis or out the front. You know, like, that doesn't really make sense. I should do some research and see. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. That, obviously, we both don't know. Do you know the guy who spray painted it? <laughs> it was me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you very much to everyone who came out. Really lovely to meet everyone afterwards and... Uh, yeah, it was just a real, real special few shows. I think it's the best show that I've ever done, which is what everyone was saying afterwards, which is, which is great. I wasn't thinking that before I started, but by the end of it, I was. He's a, here's why okay. Lithuania doesn't like Russia. Okay. During the occupation of Lithuania, at least 130,000 people, 70% of them women and children, were forcibly transported into labor camps. Well, that seems that seems inefficient. Why would why would you make them seventy percent women and children? <laughs> Were the men too quick? What's going on? You know, that's <laughs> that just seems like I, like, like I, it's wrong, but but it's wrong on two levels, like morally and also like product pro- productivity wise. Mm. <laughs> Um, but I was saying, yeah, the, I think the show that I did this year was uh, was the best one that I've done, which I wasn't thinking going into it because I had so little time to prepare for it because of COVID and all the moving that I did and everything. But it turned out being fucking great, uh, according to like everyone. So that's really great. Uh, and uh, we got some sick clips out of it, probably the best filmed uh, stand-up clips we've ever we've ever shot so those will be coming out shortly and uh, it was special because it's going to be the last shows I get to do for a while because my my surgery my surgery is coming up and uh, guys as I said last episode May 4th that's the that's the braces day so will, will we get is this the last podcast before then no we get one more Sunday yeah we get one more dude this is the second last podcast where I'm like a seven. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna go down a couple points to like a five with the braces, and then May 27 they get the surgery and I'm gonna I'm gonna go down to a two, right? One for each front tooth, sitting three inches apart from each other like that like they hate each other. My front teeth have been fighting for a long time. That's why they're crowded. They're sick of being too close to each other. They're gonna take some time apart. My front teeth are like some of your guys' parents. They need some time apart. And then maybe that will bring them back together in a more healthy way. <laughs> Those are my front teeth. They need they need to split up for a little bit, not forever. They're going to get back together slowly, but they do need some freedom from each other. They need a gap year, and that's going to be me, right? That's going to be me. I'm I'm, I'm going to enter my gap year. 
giant gap tooth between the front of my teeth. I was like talking to Keel and I'm like, oh man, hopefully it doesn't affect my speech too much. Uh, and then, and then I was like, oh, well, let's look up a guy that's like had this surgery, like, like after he's recovered from it, but he still has the big gap and the apparatus in his teeth and the braces. Uh, and we found this video of a guy who did not have braces. Uh, he just had the mouth spacer and the gap tooth and Keelan said, yeah, I couldn't listen to this. <laughs> So thanks for that very that vote of confidence, man. I also uh, voiced my concerns last episode. Got a lot of comments going, love your comedy, see you in a year. <laughs> love your stuff, man. Can't wait to listen to the podcast in six months. So look, a lot of people might be checking out, but a lot of a lot of people might be checking in. Braces are in, man. They really are. Belle Delphine is back, and she's back with braces. The most popular OnlyFans girl on the planet. The girl that started it all, the girl that all of these other OnlyFans models should pay 3% of their royalties to <laughs> is back. And she started, she had braces as an adult. And then she got rid of them, disappeared. Now she's back, she's got braces again. And you look at her teeth, they're beautiful. Some of the best teeth I've ever seen. She doesn't need them. So the, I think that it's almost a fashion accessory. And I think that's, that's how I'm going to treat it. Why have grills when you could have braces? You know, why have straight teeth when you could have a gap tooth? <laughs> why be attractive when you could be, be uh, you know what this is going to be? This is going to be an 18, 18 month boot camp for my personality. It, it's really going to be that. You ever meet someone who used to be really fat and then they got hot and, and, and it's really weird because they're like a really genuinely nice, interesting, cool, hot person. And you're like, this is, this is strange. I've never... I've never experienced that type of person before. I've, I've met interesting people and I've met hot people. They very rarely cross over. That's going to be me. By the end of the 18 months, I'm going to have a great personality glow up and a physical glow up. And not only will you have to lock up your girlfriends, you'll have to also lock up your friends. And I go, oh, I just want to hang out with Lucy. He's really interesting and nice and he cares about me. <laughs> and he listens to my stories and he remembers my name, which I don't do at all anymore. I... Uh, in the meantime, though, because the surgery doesn't... The first surgery moves the top half of my mouth so that we can do the second surgery, which actually fixes the sleep apnea problem in 18 months, right? So my all this pain I'm going to go through won't help me at all. It'll just make me look like shit for ages, and then I'll still have this horrific sleep apnea problem that I've been dealing with. I went to a sleep clinic, and I've, I've, I've rented a CPAP machine, and dude... I put that shit on, I look like Bane. I look like Bane from Batman, but but like uh, really underweight Bane, you know? Like you ever see what Bane looks like when you take him off the venom when he's going through withdrawals? That's going to be me every night in my bed attached to my CPAP machine blasting air down my throat. It's this weird mask. I was going to put it on, but I, I have the bag. It's not built, so I might put it on next episode. It's like a face mask goes around my entire face, my entire mouth and chin, and then uh, it doesn't go over my nose, but it ha it's like touching my nose, and then it has two holes, and it blows air up my nose and in my mouth, uh, and then it straps to my head, and then I have a hose that connects to the top of my head, and that, that goes into the opposite vacuum that just shoots air down the tube into my nose and mouth. Um, so that's, uh, that's really exciting. And, and, and going into that sleep clinic really made me realize that I've been cursed because I was the youngest person there and the lightest person there by about 60 years and maybe 100 kilos. Every cunt in there was a severely obese, minimum 60-year-old man. And then I was in there and everyone looked at me like, this guy's lost. You know, even the woman who was serving me, we, we, we filled out a form before we went in. So she kind of knew my problem. Even she, I felt like was like kind of gaslight, like gaslighting me a little bit. Like, are you sure you're just not uh, sleeping enough? Maybe have you tried eating red meat? And then they go, oh, we did a sleep study actually. She goes, oh really? What was your score? And then we told her and she went, oh, oh severe. Oh, <laughs> oh God's cursed you. <laughs> And then she goes, well, let's get you fitted with a mask. Now, uh, normally with bigger people, you would have to use a full face mask. But because you're lighter, 
we can just go with the nose. And I said, oh, well, fun fun story about the nose. That also doesn't doesn't work, and, and I may need a, a rhinoplasty. So blasting air up the nose won't work at all. She goes, okay, well, we'll go with the full face mask, and uh, why don't you start working on that whole uh, uh, figuring out a spell that can kill God um, for cursing you so. Um, so that's great, and I'm going to be feeling a lot better, hopefully. Apparently that uh, I will – I actually, what was really cool about it was I was listening – to a lot of the other conversations going on because it's a pretty busy store. All of these like older obese dudes coming in for checkups and like adjusting their machines and, and reporting their results and stuff. Every single person was like, oh, it changed my life. This is amazing. Thank you so much. I can drive again. Uh, I can stay awake. This is awesome. So like every single person in there was like, this is amazing. This is great. So I think that it will actually just effectively cure me as long as I use it. So hopefully that'll be, that'll be good. Cause my brain hasn't been working for a very long time and I'm sick of it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what's happening. And thanks to everyone who came out to the festival and, uh, you guys will, you guys, you know, soak it, soak it in. This is, this is the second last time you'll ever see this podcast without a giant gap tooth braces and a lisp. So enjoy this shit guys. Cause it's really going away soon. You know, the audio numbers are going to spike because here's what I think is going to happen. People are going to check out first episode with the braces. That'll get a lot of views, right? Second episode, they go, well, I don't want to look at that shit for an hour. So they'll go over to the audio and then they'll hear the list and they go, well, I don't want to listen to that shit either. And then the podcast will die. So thank you so much for listening to Spearhead Sundays. No, look, I'm being a little bit defeated about it. I'm trying to be funny. I think it's going to be good. And I think I'm going to make the most of it. And I think I'm just, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to treat my adult braces like they're grills. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to act like a fucking rapper in every photo. I'm going to be pulling my lips back, just showing off the grills. What color do I get? Green. Green? Not green, dude. I look like I got food in my teeth. Black? You can always change the color, though. That is true. I can change them whenever I want. Why, why would I go with black, though? That's even worse. Mm. I'm already going to have a giant black gap in the, middle, <laughs> in the middle of my teeth. I don't want to look like I'm, I've got only six teeth left. I think I have dark purple when I first got braces. I don't, mind, I don't mind purple. I think it has to be a color that could not be confused with food. So green's out. Oh, blue? Yeah, could be blue. I was actually thinking, you know, not a joke, I looked at the Belle Delphine's latest pictures and I looked at her braces and I thought those look really nice. Just look silver. Because I think the colour, people do colour to like hide the braces, but I reckon if you just go all silver, it, lo it looks kind of cool. It's like, yeah, I've got braces, what of it? I think I, think I might just go with pure, because I wear a lot of silver jewellery. So then I can treat, then I can go matchy, matchy. Matchy, matchy. Because I just, I don't know. I think like the, I, I'm worried about the the colored stones or whatever, just changing color. I feel like silver doesn't get, go a gross color. Whereas if I was to go with like blue or, I guess purple wouldn't change. Guys, look, right in the comment section below. I think I have to get them changed every three months anyway. So I could just cycle through, you know. I could do the six nine thing, rainbow. You know, I go rainbow, commit some crime with my friends, tell on all of them, and get them sent to prison, and then come back like I'm a legend. I might do that. Um, speaking of legends, Ethan Klein's in a lot of trouble. Ethan Klein from the H three H three show, a guy that uh, uh, I've spoken to a few times, used to speak to a lot more, don't really speak to much anymore. Um, but I've always thought he was a nice guy and I've always thought that the, the hate that he's gotten is not fair. That's I've always thought that. Um, even before his podcast, all the backlash that he got for all the shit that he's supposedly done, I've always thought was very unfair to him. I always thought he was kind of funny. Even the stuff that he does on the podcast, I think is, is kind of funny. Um, but he's in big trouble now because uh, he, he tried to be a little bit too funny. He was talking about James Charles accidentally revealing his uh, James Charles's Amazon purchases, and James had some adult diapers. Uh, Ethan Klein makes a few jokes about, oh, that means because he's a power bottom, you know. Oh, that means that James Charles is getting fucked so much in the ass that he poos himself. That's what that means. 
which I don't think is true. I'll look it up. You'll look it up. Thank you. Can you fact check that, Keelan? Does James Charles get fucked so much in the ass that he uh, poos his pants mid-YouTube video and then has to edit it out? I don't think that's what's going on. I have an alternate theory. But let's play around with the Ethan Klein theory. Let's say James Charles does have so much anal sex that he's completely incontinent. I would almost say that that's impressive. I would say that's impressive and the guy should have a medal and he should wear his adult diapers with pride. I reckon he should wear his diapers on the outside of his clothing, you know? I'm so committed to taking up the ass that I poo sometimes, you know? Because I think that's a, good, that's a good movement. You always see on TikTok, I always see like uh, girls and guys who have uh, colostomy bags, which was, which was previously a very uh, a thing that, that people would shame you for having. They say, hide that, that's gross. And all these influencers started coming out and going, no, I've got it back. It doesn't smell, you know, and this is my life and I want to show people that it's completely normal and there's nothing wrong with it. I think James should do that with his adult diapers and say, no, you know, I am so good at taking up the ass that sometimes I will poo. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, many, many men are a big fan of that. There's never been a formal study into whether gay sex leads to incontinence. Yeah, it's. It, but on Ask Reddit, yeah, someone said, "Do gay men poo more easily because of gay sex?" And someone says, "Yes, it just falls out. That's why every gay man literally wears diapers all the time." And a bunch of guys just agreeing with it. But that sounds like a that sounds like a homophobic guy. Like he didn't say, I, I "Yes, mean, that's what happens to me." I, that sounds like he's like, "Yeah, that's why a lot of." Gay guy. There seems to be a lot of people who actually agree with this. Right. But I don't, I feel like it's not going to be, I don't think that's, here's my theory. I just think he had a, a BBL. He had a Brazilian butt lift. And then he needed a diaper. Don't you need to wear, can you fact check that? <laughs> if I were to get a butt lift while I'm on the table, you know, while they're in there doing my face, they might as well give me a nice ass. If I were to get that done, would I need to wear adult diapers afterwards? I reckon it's that. Because he does have quite the rump. Mr. Charles. I think we can all agree on that. No, you don't. You don't have to? No, you don't. Okay, well then maybe Ethan Klein's onto something and that's why everyone's upset. Because he's revealing secrets. You don't need to wear adult diapers. No, but you need to wear a compression garment. For 12 okay, hours per yeah, day. All right. Well, weeks. look, guys. Well, you know what? Justice for Ethan Klein, okay? I think James Charles needs to come out and make a statement. Why are you using those adult diapers? You know? What's going on, James? Is your makeup really taking that long? <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. He wears a lot of makeup, the guy. Maybe he takes so long doing his makeup that he can't get out of the makeup chair. So he just goes in his pants. You'd know for sure that James Charles is the type of guy to, to if he does poo himself, he makes his assistant clean up. For sure. You know, he's got a bell on his desk. <laughs> that I've done, I've done a boo-boo bell. And he goes, oh. ding, ding, sisters. <laughs> hey, sisters. <coughs> I made a mess. <coughs> And then, and then some assistant who, like, she thought she was just going to be getting coffee, you know? Like, she's on, she's an unpaid intern. She thought she was just going to be, oh, yeah. Like, he told her, oh, you're just here to get coffee for me when I need it. Sometimes if I order something online, you might need to unbox it and put it where it needs to go in the house. And she goes, oh, so that sounds great. I'll get some work experience, maybe work my way up. She gets there day one. Ding, ding, sisters. He shit himself. She has to clean him up. I reckon that's what's really going on in the James Charles household. And if you don't believe me, email my sponsors. Please don't. Dear God. I'll lose $200 a week. I can't afford that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think it's $150. Dear God. Sign up to Patreon. But anyway, Ethan Klein was making terrible jokes that no one should ever make about James Charles pooing himself, which I would never do. And if you do that, you should be getting, you should be getting into big trouble. All right, I would never do that because I was being serious. I think that's what's actually going on. But Ethan was telling jokes about James being a power bottom. And I listened to the clip and, yeah, look, it, there's something in there. 
But I don't think the way that he did it was particularly hilarious. I do, I do like though. There was, I think the thing that got him in trouble was, so he's making these jokes and he has this uh, this giant fan base of uh, of I don't even know what to call them. They came from Trisha Paytas, where he got this giant like Gen Z TikTok audience that are that are very like socially conscious. I wouldn't call them social justice warriors because I think that's like 2016 cringe insult but they're very socially conscious and i've performed to audiences like this and they're just like they don't get comedy and they don't understand nuance a lot of the time now am i saying that ethan klein was being hilarious no i'm not but i feel like a lot of the time these people like this hear words or hear jokes or subjects and they lock up and they assume the worst of your intentions before you can even start the rest of the sentence, basically. Um, and I think that's what happened. And I think Ethan's fuck up was, he made these jokes and they weren't received very well on live stream and all these people were complaining in the chat. And then he kept going, which I respect. I love that, you know? Because dear God, I've bombed many times performing and gone, you know what? I think this is funny. So so now this so now my time on stage is, is less about making you laugh and more about ruining your night. I've, I've done that. You know, these jokes are for me and and they're to, to, to fuck up your car ride home. That's what this is about now. You know, I thought these were funny. They did well in that place. They're not going well here. Well, I guess I'm ruining your night and tarnishing your memory of me. I've had those where you're just bombing and no one's on board. But you just you, if I yell, if I just keep slamming this one premise that everyone hates, I'll turn the room around. And and sometimes you don't. And I think that's what happened with Ethan. He kept going in on the James Charles pooing himself because he's a power bottom joke. It wasn't well received. A gay man himself called into the show and told Ethan that he didn't appreciate the, the, the jokes. So Ethan Klein didn't apologize and instead asked the gay man who called in the show if he was a power bottom, which I think is now comes back around as quite funny. <laughs> you know, a guy's calling in and going, I think it's really disrespectful for you to assume whether someone is a top or a bottom. And Ethan goes, are you a bottom? And the guy goes, I'm not going to tell you. Which to me says, fuck, yes. But that's beside the point. The point is, okay, I don't think it was that funny, but I also don't think it was that big of a deal. Uh, it's just him making stupid shit jokes. Uh, but now, uh, all of Ethan's sponsors have dropped him. All of them. And what's interesting is this is not the result of some like cancel campaign from the left or the right. Because normally when people get in trouble and they lose sponsors, it always happens where they say something and people uh, who don't like them already jump on it and they go, see, this guy's evil. And it's people who don't listen to them, who don't like them, whatever. But in this case, it was uh, Ethan's own audience doing it to him. And I think this is what happens when you make content trashing other people for too long and playing like the moral high ground, I think. And I've, I, you know, I saw this happening to me, which is why I moved away from like the commentary type trashing other YouTubers and being holier than now type stuff. I did it for years, but I genuinely got sick of it. And I also kind of saw, you know, the audience that I was cultivating was, it was like a giant group of people who dislike success, you know, which is not a good audience you want to have if you want to be successful yourself. And you see this all the time with commentary YouTubers or people who trash people for a living. At a certain point, their own audience just eats them alive and turns on them and go, oh, you are the person that you were talking about. You know, We see this with like just about every fucking giant commentary YouTuber that kind of blew up in like 2014, 15, around now. Like their audience is, has really turned on them. And I think that's... Uh, Kind of what has happened to Ethan because he went after sponsors one time. He taught his own audience how to do that. Now, Keemstar's a fucking dork and a loser. Uh, and I think Ethan was in the right in that scenario. Not so much going after sponsors. I don't like that. But uh, I think uh, in terms of like who was the worst person, I think it was Keemstar. Um, but I think this is what happens when if you teach your entire audience, hey, if, if someone we don't like says something that we also don't like, go after their sponsors – if you teach that to your fans and then that's all well and good until you say something that they don't like and then they go, well, this is what we're supposed to do, right? 
Remember what we did to the other guy? Now we're doing it to you. Uh, so I think that's just, you know, that's what happens when you play into like cancel culture or like condemning people or calling out bullshit. And that's like the only thing that you kind of do is eventually you get turned on. And it's not going to be permanent. And he's going to come back and he's not fucking canceled because he's fucking huge and they're brilliant business people, Ethan and Ela. And I quite like them. But I think that uh, you, it's a little bit of like reaping what you sow there, you know? So that's what I think about that. Um, dude, I got, I got attacked. I was attacked. I'm a victim of an attack. You need to, you guys all need to take this very seriously. Everyone listen to this, everyone watching, Keelan, Rosie, I was attacked. And I'm lucky to be here. I went out one, one morning to go and get coffee and I was attacked. I went out and I was dressed well because I had a show that night. Out in the morning, 11, about 11 a.m., going to get myself a coffee. What suburb? Mornington. Right? Nice. Fancy. Fancy, white, rich <laughs> area. What did, which coffee shop did I go to? Maceta? What's that one? Yeah, Marketa. Marketa? Marketa. Marketa. Went to that one, right? Fancy place. I don't know the area that well. I just, I just, it was the first one that I saw. And they have a little window where they, where they do coffee. I walk up to the window and I order my coffee. Walking out of the door is this beautiful 40-something-year-old woman. And she walks out and I walk past her and she just touches me on the arm and she goes, oh, honey, do you play basketball? And I, and I went, oh, sorry. She goes, honey, do you play basketball? I went, oh, no, I don't. And she goes, baby, why not? I'm like, whoa, what's, what's going on here? Real forward. And then she takes a step towards me and then I take a step back and then she takes a step towards me and now I'm up against the wall and I don't know what to do. And she goes, you're wasting your height. And I went, oh, I guess. And she goes, what do you do? And I said, oh, and I'm flustered. Normally I lie. Normally I say accountant or something real boring. I work in marketing. I go, I'm a comedian. And she goes, I love comedy. I love comedians. I'm like, oh, thank, thanks. Cool. And then, and then she takes another step towards me and she puts her hand on my arm and she goes, do you have a girlfriend, honey? <laughs> I'm like, ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, I do. At this point, I'm like, it. normally I would, I would just keep walking. I would gi give it the conversation while I'm moving, but I'm waiting for my coffee. I'm not going to leave it. I'm not a coward, right? But I'm being attacked right now. I know what this woman wants and I'm under, and I'm, uh, I'm under attack and she's winning. My defenses are crumbling. I said, yeah, I've got a girlfriend. And she goes, how serious are you? I'm like, ah. Uh, Quite serious. And she goes, can I have your number? Or can I give you my number? And I was like, oh, prob no. And she goes, come on. Will your girlfriend get upset? And I was like, oh, yeah. And she goes, can I meet your girlfriend? I was like, what the fuck is happening? And then it kept going on like that. And I kind of kept going, oh, no, nah, respectfully saying no. And she was so aggressively horny. I didn't know what to do. But you know what, guys? You know what I did do? I enjoyed it because, because I'm going to have braces soon and that's not going to happen for a very long time. So I enjoyed my time in the sun getting attacked by a very attractive MILF who knew exactly what she wanted and she wanted me before braces because I might not get that for a very 18 months. So that might not ever happen again. So a lot of people might be judging me. You know, a lot of people might be like, oh, you have a girlfriend. What you should have done is pulled out a comically large fry pan and hit her on the head. <laughs> but I enjoyed my time in the sun. And I, and I, 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 I challenge you, right, to find me someone who wouldn't do the same. I enjoyed my time in the sun and I'm seeing her again next Sunday. No, <laughs> I'm not. I said no and I, I politely turned down her advances and then she goes, I'll just give it to you. 
and she goes to pull out some. She had a pen and paper. She was fucking strapped. I don't know. I don't know what was going on with me that day. I don't know what I was wearing, but it was making bitches pull out pen and paper. So it must have been something nice. But as she goes, I'll just give it to you. Like, oh, you know what? Just in case you change your mind and you would like to cheat on your girlfriend, you've got my number. And as she does that, they go, Lewis. And I go, that's me. Grab my coffee. Have a nice day. Nice to meet you. Goodbye. I left. And, and, uh, and, and I enjoyed my time in the sun, but that's, that's as far as it went. I got a little tan. That's it. Wasn't going to get myself sunburned. Wasn't going to do that. But I'm not going to lie and tell you that I wasn't flattered, okay? And and that's my MILF encounter. Sometimes you just get hunted. And that's never happened to me before. I don't know what I was wearing. But I'll do my best to recreate it. <laughs> I feel lucky to get out of there alive. She, I've never had a woman be that forward with me. Like that was like recently divorced, just got the settlement. Let's go. It'd be a bit less weird if she was like drunk or something. Middle of the day. That's what was so Cause yeah, I've had I've had girls, you know, I think everyone's had girls or guys come up to them at a night out that they've had too much to drink, so they've got too much confidence. Mm-hmm. Everyone's kinda had that experience. Um, I've never had a girl, but I've had several guys. Mm. Yeah, actually. Oh yeah. My God. In the middle of the day? Uh, at night, like went out. Yeah. I guys get guys a lot as me, well because yeah. of the way that I dress. You know what it is, Keelan? It's your mustache. <laughs> it's your mustache and then every now and then you'll wear like a like a very stupid colorful shirt. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a little bit gay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. And it's flattering, but no thank you, sir. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. yeah it, is, it is always good when, when, a, when, a, when a gay dude hits on you because a woman, just even if they do find you attractive, will very rarely hit on you. So, it's, so when a gay guy lets you know, that's like, that's like a little indicator that you're going in the right direction with whatever you're doing, you know? So, yeah, that was great but I'm lucky to make it out alive. Now, um, Club Penguin yes. is in the news, Keelan. Big news. Big Club Penguin news. Did you play Club Penguin, Rosie? I did. You did? I played Mushy Monsters. What's Mushy Monsters? It's like <laughs> the same. <laughs> but with monsters. Huh? It no, no, you're right. But it was rather than penguins, it was just monsters. Oh, so same shit, just like yeah. monsters. Okay, cool. Yeah. There's also a thing called Pop Tropica. I don't think I'd heard of that. I was I was a Neopets man mm. and then I graduated to RuneScape and then I got into World of Warcraft and that was about 2005 and now I'm still playing it. And that's it. I, re- I really, really liked Club Penguin growing up. I had a membership in like the toys and everything. You had a membership? I played a little bit of Club Penguin, but I, I also played Habbo Hotel. I played oh, that. Yeah, I was yeah. a, I was a Habbo Hotel member. Were you were you on 4chan at the same time? Uh, I think I was there for some of those. Yeah. <laughs> I think I was. I don't think I was. A, I don't think I was involved. But I think I was like a buy. I think I was a victim of them. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. like that was a real strange period in Habbo Hotel. That was like the genesis of like in like internet trolling in virtual spaces because mm. internet trolling used to just be like oh let's let's make this girl kill herself you know <laughs> like that's what it kind of that's where it started and then it got a little bit more nuanced uh and it's like oh let's let's go on to have a hotel a game for children make all of our characters black and then stand in a swastika formation in the pool in the pool now i didn't join <laughs> the pool in on is those <laughs> yeah that's they stand and they just say pools closed like <laughs> in swastika formation now I didn't partake in them, but I distinctly remember like being in a lobby that got attacked yeah. by these four chain people. And I, fuck, I would have been like ele- ten or eleven. When was Habbo Hotel? Maybe yeah, maybe yeah, eleven. Yeah. And I'm just like you know like fucking clicking and walking around. <laughs> like I'm gonna go check out the pool. And then all of a sudden, all these characters just start popping up. Oh, there's a lot of bald white guys here that's crazy <laughs> no it's a little, oh they all look the same well that's interesting i mean i've put effort into my outfit i've got like a nice jacket and some brown hair i kind of look like me 
lot of bald white guys showing up in the lobby. And then all of a sudden they just get into this swastika. I'm like, this is strange. I feel unsafe. <laughs> Leave lobby. Uh, so what, what's happened with Club Penguin? Club Pen- last I heard of Club Penguin, Disney bought the whole thing. Yeah, like 15 and then years ago. did nothing with it and then let it die. And then it shut down. So in 2017, it shut. Like just like Star Wars. Yeah. You know? Like they spend an obscene amount of money. Oh, let's buy that property over there. They buy it and they go, all right, let's starve it to death. Yeah. Well, in, so in 2017, they shut Club Penguin down and everyone was quite upset about it. Yeah. So these just like really enthusiastic coders yeah. came and I guess copied or just recreated the source code. I don't really understand how it works. Yeah. But- it's so called they remade the game. Remade the game, yep. and it's called Club Penguin rewritten, rewritten. Right. Or as the uh, the like the hash. What is it? The the link is CP re, rewritten. 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 <laughs> rewritten. So that's pretty funny. That's good. Um, and then, but like after like years of this existing, yeah, it became a place that was like unmoderated. So everyone would go mm. in there and just be really racist or homophobic, anti-Semitic. So have a hotel <laughs> vibes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, oh, and and so Disney got very upset about this and were like, "Stop that!" So they got taken down a few years ago for copyright infringement. Yeah, they came back, but the servers were so expensive they started placing ads on there, right? Like sex ads. And, yeah, it'd be like porn sex <laughs> ads. That's then, so fuck. Hey, uh, how can we fund our children's game? Oh, I don't know, porn. Yeah, and so then the other day, the British police arrested the guys who created it. Oh, wow. And now the website, I'll pop it up here, says City of London Police. Yeah. This site has been taken over by Operations Creative Police IP Crime Unit. That's so... I always I always think it's weird when... Uh, when I guess it makes sense, but I, I've always thought that it's strange when police get involved in, like, IP disputes. Mm. Like... Because uh, it's not like I stole something, a thing from you. I always think it's, it always, whenever I see cops do that, it always like, is like, oh yeah, they're, you know, there's a, there's a good portion, there's a good bit of, there's a good lot of police that are out there to protect people with it, but a good portion of it is just to protect rich people's assets. You know, whenever I see that, I'm like, oh yeah. Like my mate was in, uh, he's in some, uh, like, uh, Southeast Asian country at the moment. And, uh. He went to the markets and they're selling like bootleg bags and stuff. And and the whole market just got raided by the police and they took all, they seized the whole market and, and handed out all these fines to like really poor people, uh, pretty much at Louis Vuitton's behest. And it's like, come on, if, you know, I understand you got to protect your brand and if you make a thing, you don't really want fake shit out there. But mm. is is... If that's really like the only way that these people who es- essentially live on the street can feed their kids, is it, you know, do we have to do that to them? Can't we just like give them a pass for a little bit? I guess not. I don't know. Yeah. What? It's pretty frustrating. And that's how I feel about these club penguin people. All right. They're just, they're just go- impoverished people trying to feed their children by showing porn ads to your children. Okay. Leave them alone. What's wrong with that? I think it's very funny that a website created for kids just became a place for racism and homophobia. <laughs> Isn't that every fucking website for kids though? Like that's that's every social media website. That's every single website that I ever used as a child just devolved into like racism and homophobia and then it freaked you out and you would go somewhere else. You know, like that was RuneScape was real bad with that. Uh, Habba Hotel was really bad with it. Pe- Club Penguin got real bad with it. What are other games I play? Uh, I know I played a few games that like I distinctly remember like horrifically racist sexist trolling happening in and then just like also moments where I was like oh that was definitely like a guy trying to groom me mm. you know for sure yeah I mean Omegle yeah <laughs> that was that you know when you, you know when you're in primary school and you go on an Omegle and, it, and you just be like Russian <laughs> roulette who am I gonna find a pedophile a dick or a racist Sometimes you get you get the trifecta, you get all three. And it's like winning the jackpot. <laughs> like a racist pedophile with his dick out. You're like, fuck yeah. You did it. Yeah, every, everyone did that, you know? You know, it's a great idea. Omegle is a great idea. Connect with a stranger in in from a, anywhere in the world. Great idea on paper. You know? Like that's a great idea if humans were, were what we wanted to be. But we're not, are we? 
You know, we're, we're horrible little animals. And that's why, yeah. So, look, <laughs> good on Club Penguin. Maybe, maybe it should just be dead. Maybe it should be dead. I don't think that's good. But I do miss it a little bit. Well, I don't even understand why they took it off in the first place. It doesn't make sense. Well, I guess it's it's theft, you know. Yeah, but it's a theft for a a website that's not used anymore. That shit I don't really understand because it's it's I I, I understand like oh stop making fake versions of my thing that I currently sell. I don't understand taking down properties that that you're not, you know, running or selling or whatever. Sure, when that's running, reach out to them and take a cut, for sure. That's what I would do. If I was like, you know, if I sold a, a thing, if I did a thing in my business that I no longer offered and then someone managed to recreate it, I might go, hey, dude, great job. I'm going to take half of what you make because it, it is my thing. But if you want to run it, you can have the other half. Go for it. Or something like that. It's like when, um, it, it's like when, like with movies and TV series, in, especially in Australia, where they don't put them on any streaming service that's available in Australia. They don't make it available for purchase, but they will still prosecute you if you pirate it. It's like, I can't get it legally. I have no other option. What do you want me to do? Um, so, yeah, that's very weird. Good on Club Penguin. It's gl- I'm glad that it's had like a, a little resurgence here. How long have we been going for? Guys, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped.com. The best personal groomer in the game, okay? I it's something that I use all the time. Not all the time. I'm not I'm not that meticulous with it, but it's something that I use whenever whenever I look down and I go, you know what, this needs a bit of a trim up. This need this could be a little bit cleaner. It's I'm looking a bit disheveled here. That's I go I go directly to the lawnmower 4.0. The best personal groomer in the game. Uh, they've also come out with uh, with deodorant, chapstick, uh, roll on deodorant. Two-in-one shampoo conditioner, which we love, and there's nothing funny about. Nothing funny at all. Nothing funny about two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. And best of all, we have code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. The Lawn Mower 4.0, the best ball bag trimmer in the game, something that I genuinely use. I don't recommend products that uh, I wouldn't use myself. And the Manscaped thing has been a brilliant sponsor of everything that I do for years. Uh, They're great to work with and they they sell a great product that you just need, you dirty animal, all right? Trim those pubes, okay? Get rid of them, all right? Lawnmower 4.0. Go to manscaped.com, use code SPEARS, 20% off, free shipping. Sort yourself out. Now, with that out of the way, it's time for miscellaneous bit at the end, the the worst part of the show where I answer questions sent in via email by you guys. If you have a question, email podcast at loosespears.com. Would love to hear from you. Uh, I've got this question, right? By the way, this segment is sponsored by Patreon. We've got a Patreon exclusive episode up right now uh, that you can go and listen to and also a giant backlog and we've got a Discord as well and that's how we fund everything, keep it all spinning. Uh, join the Patreon if you want uh, an extra bit of, the well, the uncut version of the episode every week. Cool. Live question. Hey, Lewis, I'm an 18-year-old male who's turning 19 this year. I mention this because the girl I like is 30. Dude, this is the opposite of my story. (laughs) I got hunted by a MILF. This guy's hunting a MILF. He's the MILF hunter, but the woman who who attacked me was the MILF hunter. Um, I'm an 18-year-old male who's turning 19 this year. I mention this because the girl I like is 30. We have so much in common. No, you don't. And I can't help but think she's she's perfect. Uh, And on top of getting along really well, she's also rather cute. I don't know if she'd ever go out with me, however, so sometimes I wonder if I should give up. I thought I had one time as I didn't feel anything special about her until we talked again, reminding me of why I loved her in the first place. You love her. You love this 30-year-old woman. Who is this woman? Tell me about it. Maybe we'll all fall in love. (laughs) She sounds great. I can't tell if she likes me too because she'll give me what feels like slight hints, such as when we were talking about talking with our co-workers and joking around. I said I was an ugly cunt and she said I was cute. <laughs> yeah, look, bro, I don't know if that's it. All right? I don't know if that's it. You got the whole room laughing, all right? And we've got, and and we we're, we're very gender diverse here at at Spears Incorporated and you got the whole room laughing, all right? <laughs> 
Now, Rosie, if I was talking to you and out of nowhere, ask me how my day was. How was your day? I'm such an ugly cunt. What would you say? you say, no, you're not. Yeah, I'd reassure you that you weren't. Yeah, yeah, look. But also, like, if, like, I don't think I would lie to someone and say, oh, no, you know, I'd try to, I'd say something else. So, so, okay. <laughs> So to so maybe maybe today, right? If I was oh, I'm such an ugly cunt, you'd be like, no, you're not, right? But two weeks from now, when I get my braces and my gap tooth, and I go, I'm such an ugly cunt, you'd be like, don't feel bad, but also you're kind of spitting facts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. Like calling yourself an ugly cunt, and then going, oh no, you're cute, like. Or is that, no, you're cute. You know, it depends how she said it. Well, I would say, oh, no, you're not. But then she's adding an extra compliment. She's, okay, she's added a compliment. So maybe there is something there. Let's read the rest of this. Um, slide it. Uh, I said I was an ugly cunt and she said I was cute. Uh, what do you think of this, Keelan? You reckon that's flirting? No, not at all. No? I think she's being nice. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think she's being friendly. And I said I was an ugly cunt and she said I was cute. Uh, and whenever she complains about her past relationship, she always had something that gives me hope. Example, when talking about relationships, she complained that guys suck. And after a brief pause, said that maybe she just hasn't been dating the right guys. What is wrong with this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Okay, look. <laughs> I think that you're reading into this a lot, bro. <laughs> I think you're in love with this woman and you're real hopeful. Look, men and women believe two things, what they what they fear to be true and what they really want to be true. And I think you really, really want this chick to like you and you're picking up on a lot of stuff that she's not dropping. You know? Oh, if she goes, oh, my last boyfriend sucks, maybe I'm not dating... The right guys. That's just like an honest, you know, that's like an honest thing that she's saying about herself. If she goes, oh, maybe I'm not dating the, maybe she goes, oh, I hate my last boyfriend. And then she pauses and she looks you deep in the eyes and she goes, maybe I'm not dating the right type of guys. And then gets on her hands and knees and sucks your dick in the back of McDonald's. That's a hint. But, it, but from your email, it doesn't seem like that's what's happened. Um, I can't help but love her. Though I'm uncertain whether I have a chance or if I'm chasing a dream that will never happen, what do you think? Have a shit one. Okay, look, I would say the very fact that you have had what seems to be three conversations with this woman and you love her, that that is a bit of an issue. Because if you love her, but you're also uncertain if she's even dropping hints or not, there's already like a giant imbalance of attraction there. I think... That maybe for your own sake, you should just ask her out and then you'll get your answer. Just go, hey, I think you're really cute. I think you're really nice. I think we get along. Why don't we go out? You're almost 19. You're like, oh, not really an adult, but you're getting there. She's 30. You know, roll the dice, man. Worst she can say is no. And then you can stop living in this weird like, oh, man, she she brought uh, she brought chips for her lunch break today, and, and I also like chips. Is that like a hint that she wants me to do anal with her? I don't know. Maybe I'm reading too much into this. I think you might be reading a lot, you know? Like, have you seen Have you seen the the how big the book It by Stephen King is? Jesus. I tried reading that in two, in, two, in two separate times. I got halfway through it, and then it was so long that I just – it was a great book, but I, I, I had to give up on it. And then I came back like three years later and I read the whole thing and it took me like six months. Mm. The, the amount of reading that I had to do to get through that book is like not even half as much as reading that you're doing into this situation. You're reading way too much into this, dude. Yeah, it sounds like it's a chick that you've talked to like three times and you're like, oh man, she's hot. I'm in love. You know, there's nothing wrong with a crush, dude, but I don't know if you're in love, you know? So I would say ask her out and, and see what happens. And if she says no... Definitely respect that decision, you know? But if she says yes, awesome. You got nothing to lose. You're not dating her, go for it. Um, okay. One last question. 
Okay, that is that is huge, and the subject line is three sentences, so I might come back to that later. Okay. <laughs> All right. What else do we have here? Um, hmm. Where are we? Okay. What do we have? If you would like to send an email, send it through. Oh, here we go. Public sex capade, sex troll from a lovely lady. I love, I love this. Women's emails are the best because they, I don't know why. They just always are. Hey, Lewis. First with the ass kissing. I found the Luke and Lewis podcast back in 2019. Fell in love. Oh, uh, maybe you should ask me out. Um, no, you're cute. I went back and uh, listened to all of the radio days and then kept up to date with all the new content. Went back and listened to your yours after seeing your comedy show last year and loved your live performance energy. Wish I got a photo, but I was on a date and it seemed a bit rude to keep her waiting since we're both horny. Gay women. This is what I'm this is what I mean. Giant subset of this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um bit excited, Keelan, but all, all right. <laughs> Point of call. I thought I would give you a story from my hoe days, uh, as I was a huge slut in all caps. Now, <laughs> a monogamous slut, lowercase. Uh, the only time that I had a break from fucking people was when I lived with my parents during the uni school holidays. Uh, anyway, back in 2020, it was about end of April, and we were all about to stab our brains out having been in lockdown. And I, being who I was, thought, oh, this will end soon. Time to start doing the rounds and see who I can get to keep this pussy calm for a week. Jesus. Man, you sound exciting. I get uh, Tinder back and I start scrolling like crazy. I eventually come across a guy who was about, dude, she goes both ways, who was about six foot nine and built like a brick shit house. I'm just built like, a, like one single long brick. Um, this guy's <laughs> called Josh. This dude was huge, looking like the rock and damn pleasing to look like. I was surprised when he reached out to me and we hit it off just chatting away. It was early May at this point and we had only just come out of lockdown. So naturally I had him come around and absolutely, okay, this is like the really, really, really fucking graphic. And I'm, I thought I was going to get a funny public sex capade. This literally reads like uh, erotic literature. I'm going to skip a little bit. Okay. This is like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of detail here. I'm going to I'm going to highlight that's how much this this big paragraph that I've just highlighted is literally just real graphic details about what they did during sex. So I'm skipping past that. Thank you. But but I'm I'm making an executive call here. Anyway, one night I was in a very wet mood. Okay. This <laughs> Anyway, I was in a very wet mood, and he, I've, heard the fight, I've never heard a woman go, oh, I'm in quite a wet mood. Uh, I'm, I was in a very wet mood and hit him up. He says he was exercising in the park down the road from me, but I had to go and find him, like a sexy scavenger hunt type. Anyway, I put on pants and a jacket because it's June, very cold, and I make my way into the dark to look for the tick. I ended up finding him working out on a metal, metal car-shaped playground. We get to talking, and I end the banter, and I told him, I want to have sex. So we walk down the path and find a regular footpath bridge and he and I drop our pants getting ready to do the deed when we hear footsteps from about 50 metres away. This is good. Now we're into the meat of the story. Pardon the pun. <laughs> uh, from about 50 <laughs> metres away. Now, this bridge we picked was, was not a good choice. Heaps of light, level with the footpath. Basically, anyone who would be walking over or along the path, the bridge, would have, have a spot it. So me being me, I was like, we should have sex here. And he goes, hell no, people will report us. So we walk a little bit down down the path. He goes, uh, give me head here. Way more details. Heaps more details. We walk towards a road and I noticed that the cars going past have to drive over a small stream. The road was a bridge. He and I jump the six foot fence, quickly run under the road and immediately know we're out of eyesight. Uh, we go to one side of the stream thinking it was okay, but it had a heap of used condoms and bongs lying around. So that means it was the safe spot. That's, you know, a lot of evidence that not many people get caught here if they're leaving condoms, you know. If you get caught mid-public sex, that condom stays in your pants. So I would oh. say that you should have stopped there. 
We go to the other side, which is slightly more visible. Big mistake. But we take the risk. He drops his pants. I drop mine and we go nuts for a while. We finish up, add a few condoms to the collection and leave. When I get home, I see my best friend, also a housemate, uh, and tell her about my conquest under a bridge. I thought I should be proud of this. Uh, she just looks at me, laughs, calls me a fucking sex troll. <laughs> I would agree with your friend there. Um, me and the guy never hooked up after that. Did it have something to do with being a sex troll? I'll never know. Anyway, I'm seeing your show and coming with that same friend. Look forward to seeing it. Have a shit one. Liz. Great. <laughs> Should you censor her name? Well, she's written it. Okay. So maybe. Look, she's written it. I'm reading it. If you want me to use a fake name, don't give me your name. Well, that was, look, great story. I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, a bit of constructive feedback. I do think the three paragraphs graphically describing the type of sex and everyone's privates was a little bit unnecessary for the story and makes me think that part of the that that was part of the reason why you sent it was to get me to read it and maybe you got off on it Liz. So, uh thank you for your story. I enjoyed the exciting parts of where you almost got caught, but the more graphic parts maybe maybe keep that on like uh you know uh Reddit boards where you write about your sex. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. I hope we you guys got out of that episode without feeling too horny. Uh, I did. Um, I don't. I'm not so sure about Keelan though. But thank you very much for for listening. I'll talk to you guys next Sunday, which will be the final episode without braces. So get ready for that. Thank you very much. I'm going to continue on Patreon, and we'll read the dirty parts of that story. <laughs> uh, all right. Talk to you soon. Have a shit one. Bye. <laughs>